Hey, it's Tim here. And in today's video, what we're going to be doing is talking about the include function, which is a level of detail calculation. This is the second of my videos on level of detail calculations. Be sure to check out the previous one I just let out on fixed level of detail calculation. Before we get stuck into the video, it's also important to make sure you go to my channel and also check out the videos on granularity and also the order of operations. Um, doesn't have to be my content necessarily, but just make sure you're familiar with these two concepts because we'll be talking about them in this particular video. And in this video, it makes uh, a lot more uh, difference in terms of your level of understanding if you don't know about those concepts. So check out those concepts before we get stuck in. Last but not least, um, if you enjoy the content that I make on this channel, be sure to share it with other people, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you find out as soon as I launch new videos out on this channel. Okay. That's enough, let's get stuck in. Okay, so for this one, I'm actually gonna just dive right into Tableau and set up an example. I'm gonna open up the uh, Superstore sales, I'm gonna open up the American version, but you can open up whichever version comes on your machine. Um, to do this, I'm actually gonna build a very simple view. I'm gonna bring region onto rows, then I'm gonna bring sales onto where it says ABC. That uses a feature called show me, which then builds us this really nice table. Now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to an average, okay? And then I'm gonna ask you this question. What average is this actually showing me? It says average sales. And so you might argue that this is the average sales for each region. But if I then challenge you a little bit more on what exactly is that average of, um, it's a really important thing to have clear. Some people might say that this is the order IDs um, data set. So you see everything here is about orders and therefore this is the average of each order. That's not actually correct, okay? The level of detail for this whole entire data set, the granularity, the grain, the level of sort of row level information that we actually have in this data set is actually at the product level. So if I just show you here, let's just go into this table and I just uh, bring uh, sort this by order ID and let's just find an order with multiple items. You can see here, I've got this order here um, with two items. You'll see here that if I just go across, same order ID, but the product name is actually what's different about these individual rows. So this data set, although it's about orders, actually tells me more about the products in each order rather than just the orders themselves. So whenever I do any aggregation, I have to bear that in mind because what this average is, is actually just the average of all the individual products in our orders totaled up and essentially just calculated across the whole entire table. So essentially what you do here to get this 215, I'll just show you in a new sheet is you drag the order ID onto rows. I'm gonna bring the customer name as well, just because you know a customer can have multiple orders. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll also bring sales here onto the table. And then I'll also bring product name because this is the actual grain of our data. And you can see each and every individual one of these is actually the level of detail of our data set. And if I just go into my table, you'll see that I, in the orders table, I have 9,994 rows. And in here, we actually have 9,986. There's actually some duplicate records somewhere in this data. I know that because I've worked with it a lot. But if I just bring the count of orders here, which just counts the rows in the orders table, you'll see that it's just one for the number of rows here. So this is the actual grain of our data. So if we take that count out and we just look at this, um, and we look at the specific grouping that we were talking about. So if we take central as a very simple example, let me drag region in front of order ID and let's just keep central as the only data set in our view. And then we're gonna bring the worksheet and then show the summary. And then you'll see here in the summary view that the average is actually 216. This is just computing the average of all these values. So this is in fact the average of each and every one of these product sales, if that makes sense. And it matches that. It's rounding it up and down in, 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 our, in our calculator, but it's more or less exactly the same thing. So that's basically what that average is showing. And so when it comes to fixed level of details and include level of details and exclude level of details, it's really important to be aware of the question at hand. Now, the question I'd really like to answer is, what is the average order size in each of these regions? And so in order to do that, I have to bring some additional context into this visualization that isn't currently in there. But what I don't want to do is have to show that context. That's sort of the value add with level of detail calculations. You can compute the different level to what you're actually looking at. Remember in my previous video, I talked about the viz level of detail. And so the viz level of detail is controlled by anything on columns and rows. 
and then pretty much most things on the marks pane apart from the tooltip. The tooltip is the only thing that doesn't change the viz level of detail. It uses this uh, capability called the attribute to sort of get around that. And so pretty much everything else controls the viz level of detail. Let's just clear that and let's start looking at our level of detail calculation. So let's open up the calculation window and let's just type the question we're trying to answer. What is the average order size uh, in each region? OK, so let's just put that in there so it's really, really clear and you can have that in, in context. And so let's go to a new line and I'm just going to type the calculation first. Then I'm going to show you how it solves the problem. In order to write this calculation, I'll just uh, type a open curly brackets here. And you can see it's, it's very, very simple. I press the function key uh, for emoji there. We don't need that. So if I just uh, make this larger, uh, the first thing I need to do is type include. OK, and what the include uh, level of detail does is it essentially brings a dimension into the visualization. So unlike fix, which is working independent of the visualization, include and exclude work in conjunction with whatever is in our view. So at the moment we have regions. Therefore, if I then say order ID, what's going to happen is it's going to add order ID into the view, which means the level of detail for the view and this calculation will actually be region and a combination of order ID, not just uh, region or not just order ID. OK, and so I'll show you an example of that in a second. So let's just finish typing this out. Uh, and what we want to do is sum up all the sales. And then what we're going to do after doing this is calculate the average of all these values. So I'm always typing sales incorrectly here. I should just use autocomplete. It's a sort of a thing of habit. And you can see that this calculation is now valid. I'll just make sure I type this correctly with a capital I. And now we have our include um, uh, calculation. So what this is doing is it's basically looking at the viz level of detail. It's, it's showing me that, you know, you're only working at the region. So go ahead and add order ID to that level of detail. And then go ahead and calculate the total sum of cells. OK, so I'm just going to call this order size because that's essentially what it's calculating. This is calculating the total order size for this particular uh, setup. So I'm going to hit apply. And when I do that, it shoots off over here to this left hand side pane. And so now that I've done that, I can bring that into the view and we can start to look at it. And so you see, you get the same total as we had before, sort of nothing controversial there. But if I then change this to the average order size, you can see that we get a very different number 426.6 for each and every one of these. And so just to validate that, let's go ahead and look at what the value is for central. So for central, we're seeing here that the uh, value is 426.6. So let's go over ahead to my other visualization. Let's remove product name over here. And you can see here that it's 427. So it's again doing some rounding up. Uh, this is 426.6. So it rounds up to 427, which is essentially what this is uh, showing here, which is kind of sort of good to know. Um, you can sort of add other, uh, um, you know, uh, aggregates to this uh, summary window and it's just a you know nice thing to have it's like a calculator so you can now see that the number is correct and this is what is actually being calculated here so now that we've done this some of you might be saying well hey tim i could do this with fix couldn't i and you can so just bear with me now as i take a small tangent let's go and create a fixed calculation here and i'm going to do this the exactly the same thing fix to the order id go and show me the sum of sales let's type in sales correctly here and just close that off and then do a close brackets at the end so basically what this is doing is remember the fixed level of detail doesn't work with anything in the visualization the calculation is independent and so unlike the include function it's going to work very differently and i'll show you an example of this in just a second so this is going to go ahead and aggregate all the sum of cells for each order id okay so i'm just going to say this is the fixed version of the order size. OK, and so we're going to hit apply and click OK. And then we're just going to drag that into the view. And uh, again, it gets the same total as before. And then we go in here and we set the average. And there we go. We get exactly the same answer. 426.6, 484.5. And so you're probably wondering, well, hey, hey Tim, so you know, why did you go through all this effort to show me the include uh, function when it does exactly the same thing as fixed? Well, it actually depends on the question you're asking. You see, there's a subtle difference between these two things. 
Let me change this to include subcategory and then I'll try and explain to you why they're different. Let me just duplicate this sheet like this. So we keep the other one there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab subcategory and replace region with subcategory. And then you'll see now these start doing completely different things. They're not showing the same thing. And if you can guess why this is before I explain it to you, then let me know in the comments below. Um, if you can, then you are a pro user of Tableau. You're totally in tune with everything that you need to know with granularity and uh, you know level of detail calculations. Essentially what's going on here is that our orders are actually based on the product level. And so when a customer makes an order, let me just show you the table. When a customer makes an order, we capture a few bits of information, okay? And if I just sort of uh, narrow down to these two, um, that's actually not, not a good example. Let me find another example. Oh, here we go. This is a big order here, right here. So this is a good example because it spans quite a few rows. So there we have an order. And uh, you can see this customer is called, uh, what is it, Brasina Hoffman, okay? And they are in Los Angeles and United States, and they've bought items across multiple subcategories. That's a really important thing to be aware of, okay? Multiple categories and subcategories. If I scroll across, you'll see all the different products, which makes total sense. And then you'll see the region is West, okay? So the region is the same in this particular context. The segment uh, is the same as well. And then you have the subcategories, which are different. And so this is actually why these are working differently when I switch from region to subcategory, because at the region level, the same customer is going to be ordering from the same region. The region is just capturing the region that that customer lives in. See, this regional data, this location data is actually belonging to the customer, okay? Whereas my subcategory is different. And so my fixed LOD is actually going to be doing double counting in this view because what it's doing is independent of the visualization, it's going out and totaling all the orders and it's basically... It's going out and totaling all the products in my order and then apportioning them to the order ID. Whereas my include function is doing that not just at the order level, but at the order and subcategory level. So the order and subcategory level, this number is actually correct. What it's basically doing is it's almost creating a combined field between subcategory and order ID, then computing the average based on that. So you can actually uh, split an order in a slightly level of different level of detail compared to our fix, which isn't doing that. And that's why you can see here in accessories, we're getting a rather high value, even higher than what we had uh, before for one particular region, because actually what it's doing is it's just looking at the total order size, even if they're from another category, and then it's kind of calculating the average, okay? And so uh, an order can have multiple subcategories, and that's why that's basically so high. So in this case, to get the right number, and this time, let's say we've changed the question to ask, what's the average order size within each subcategory? What we have to do is we have to basically split up our order and basically treat an order as being an order and subcategory combination because you don't want to sort of be merging orders from different subcategories. And so we kind of create a new sort of, let's think of it as a combined field, essentially. Then we're going out and calculating this value. And actually this, this middle value is the correct one, which is why we need to use the include function in the first place. This outer one is actually incorrect, but it ends up being correct when we look at it from a regional perspective. If I just go back to this one, because in this one, the order does actually belong to the region. And so when we do a fixed level of detail here, it will give us the same as the include function, okay? So that's a really sort of important thing to be aware of. The include function and the fixed uh, LOD work slightly differently. And they, although sometimes they can give you the same answer, as soon as you change that question, as soon as you just start dragging and dropping things into the view, that question can very quickly change. And so you need to keep asking that question about whether that's the correct context for your calculation, okay? So just to summarize, the include level of detail will take our aggregation. So let's bring this up. Uh, let's bring up the order size function. I'll open this up. It'll take our visualization and it will understand what's in the visualization level of detail. In this case, it's subcategory. Previously, it was region. Okay. And then it will also bring in order ID into that level of detail. So now think of subcategory and order ID as two things. And then it will use that to figure out the total sales at that level, that new level that it's basically added.
then it will go and do the average. Um, in this case, we've done the average uh, inside of um, this, this sort of uh, calculation window, but we could actually uh, end up doing the average here. And then you can do the aggregation in the calculation, but I'm just gonna leave it like this because the order size is something that we might want to do flexibly in lots of different situations, okay? And so that is basically summarizing what's going on here. In fact, uh, if I actually change this particular question, what is the average order size in each subcategory? Because now that's what's correct. Um, you can see that um, sort of working there, okay? So we've had a look at a very basic example of the include function. I can see some people still confused, you know, or like when would I ever use this? Well, this is a very good example of when you might use it, but let's see what you might do if you wanna use a more complex question, maybe another example that you can also use. Let's get stuck into that. Okay, so let me close this window and we're gonna try and ask a new question here. So the question I wanna ask is, which city has manufacturers that create the biggest sales? Okay, it's a slightly more complex question because what we have to do is find out essentially the largest sales for each manufacturer and then try and you know do the average across each of these cities essentially okay um so let's go ahead and try and do that essentially so the first thing i'll do is open up a calculation and we're going to do a level of detail calculation of course we're doing the include one so let's go ahead open up the brackets i'll make this larger so you can see and i'll do include and in this case we need to do the average for the manufacturer first so let's go ahead and include the manufacturer okay and let's go do that then we need to go and find the largest cell for each manufacturer okay so let's just go do that and let's say we want the largest cell okay and just close that as well and then uh, we're going to close out that bracket okay so that's sort of the first the first part and I, I never know how to sort of name these things but we'll just say um we're basically finding the largest cell for the manufacturer okay this is, should actually be a comment comment i don't know why i'm putting it in the name let's go ahead and put it in a comment here so it's easy to see okay uh finding the largest cell for the manufacturer okay and it's this is going to do it in context of the visualization okay so in context of the viz because it will do it for the largest manufacturer and whatever else we have in the viz so in context of the viz is what i'm going to put here uh in context of the viz let's just make sure that's clear okay so we've done the first uh sort of part of our question and i'm just going to say manufacturer manufacture uh i can't even spell here i'm just going to call this um manufacturer manufacturer uh, max cells include so we know what we're creating essentially okay then we're going to hit apply and now you'll see that that calculation has shot off over here and is now available for us to use okay the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start building my view and then we're basically going to try and answer this question properly okay so let's just hit uh, Control a just to clear out the annotations and hit close and let's just now start bringing in the question we're trying to answer so here's the cities okay you can see here are all the cities and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in that uh, new calculation we've just created um, which is just here manufacturer max sales include okay we're going to bring that into the view and of course this first thing it's going to do is total it the thing we actually want to do is do an average okay so it's going to go and find on average the biggest sales for each manufacturer within the cities okay and then we're going to uh, bring this actually we're going to just sort this from largest to smallest and there we go so it's jamestown is essentially the city in which the manufacturers on average generate the biggest sales okay so it's a slightly more complex question to ask and it involves a little bit more sort of thinking if that makes sense it involves us to sort of make sure we're asking the right question if i just go ahead here and open this up um, you can sort of see the context of the four questions so what we had to go and do is go and find the max sales for each manufacturer and because this is doing it in context of the viz it's like saying that you're doing a manufacturer and city combination okay then it's going to find the max sales so remember our data set is working at the product level of detail so it's gone off and found the max sales on a product level for each of those combinations okay and then it's basically got those ready to go it sort of loaded them up and then what we're asking it to do is to take an average of that value and that will give us 
the uh, value for each of these cities. If we wanted to, we could go into each one of these and just open this up. And we get a summary view which tells us what's going on. But also if we click on this, we'll actually get uh, this, this view. And so you can see, uh, this is a really good example because you can see that it's got the city Jamestown and it's got Logitech and uh, Apple, okay? And this is the max sale for each of these uh, manufacturers, okay? So this is the largest one. Um, and then what you can see here is that it's basically taken an average of these two and it's come back with 2,354. So maybe that wasn't a bad question to ask because we just don't have that level of um, detail and sort of um, as much information in each row to really be asking this question in a meaningful way because the average is sort of taking two ends of our extreme and just drawing a line in the middle. But hopefully you can see this question is working a little bit more realistically, okay? If I actually go ahead and do this, let me just um, go and bring in the sales value into the table as well. Uh, you can actually see the total sales. And if I go back in here and click uh, the detail view for this one, you'll see that we actually get three tables here at the bottom. So we get the one we got before, which shows us these two values. And if we look at Logitech and Jamestown and we go to orders, we'll see that it's the only value in here. So Logitech here, the max is 159 and the max is 454 there. So that is a pretty interesting sort of uh, set of data. If I just bring in the row count here, well, let's try and find something with lots and lots of detail. Jamestad only had sort of two values there. If I go to uh, Lafayette, I think is the correct way to say this. Let's go in here and uh, let's go have a look at this more granular data, okay? So here we have the max values for each and every one of these manufacturers, okay? And essentially what's going on is it's basically gone and calculated the average across all of these manufacturers, okay? And that's coming back at uh, 1,006, uh, that's not actually correct. Let's go back to the right one here. 25,036 is the total, but the average is actually 1,204 across all these values. And so the way it's doing that, if we go down to Avery, for example, and go into the orders, you'll see the orders actually calculates across 31 rows. We have all the information here and we can go across and just start looking at this in a little bit more detail. So you can see the sales here um, work at a slightly different uh, level of detail and you can start to see how this is working, okay? So it's really nice that the summary view actually gives you this. So when you go into the tabular view, Tableau actually shows you what it's doing and how it's computing it. And now this is basically doing what we asked it to do. We are finding out the average max sales of all our manufacturers within each city and then saying which city on average creates the biggest ones of those opportunities, okay? Now, it's probably a good idea to have the count of rows here so you can just sort of get some context as to what's driving that average. So here you can see New York City has 915 orders in this particular case. Sorry, 915 rows in this particular case. Um, if we actually did a count of orders, the way we can do that is go to count of uh, order ID. So we just put that in there and make sure we do a count of distinct of order ID, then put that in our table. So you can see here, New York has 450 orders from, uh, for us to work with. So when we go into that particular one, you can see here that this is going to be working off a much bigger pool of manufacturers because a lot of a lot of manufacturers are uh, selling products in this particular uh, city or the customers are in this particular city and therefore these manufacturers are serving those customers in New York and then these are the max sales for each of those and then it's going to do the average, okay? So slightly obstruse question, but you can see how much we got into the weeds of just really understanding what the level of detail uh, calculation is doing and more importantly, what our data set is about. Really understanding the context of the question and really understanding uh, what we're trying to ask to make sure we're getting this correct, okay? Now, before I close out the video, I'm gonna call out uh, the resources that I mentioned earlier on. Um, go and check out this page on level of detail expressions by Tableau, it's really, really good. It goes into the detail of what they do, how they do that and how to make sure you're doing them correctly. This article here by Bethany Lyons uh, from Tableau, who's a senior product manager, she talks about the 15 most used LOD expressions, and you'll find a few in there that use the include function. And then lastly, an overview of the LODs. Um, this one actually covers some things to be aware of. So not only does it sort of tell you how, it, how they work exactly, but it also gives you some exceptions to be aware of. And the last thing is the Tableau's order of operations. Just understanding this is really, really important to make sure that you know what's actually going on 
with your calculations. I didn't touch too much in overdraw operations in the include function, just because I think it was easier to see what was going on here. Um, but if you ever wanted to do that, actually there's another white paper, which I'll put a link to in the description, which actually shows a visual representation of how the calculations are working. Um, if I just sort of uh, remind you here, the include function happens after dimensional filters, okay? So they happen at a slightly different place in our data set, and um, which is why um, it's really important to sort of get that context, okay? So that's it for this video. It's been an introduction into the include function and the LODs. Uh, hopefully you start to understand why you might use them or what you might want to use them for. And um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video where I'll be covering the exclude function, which is actually very similar, but just works in the opposite direction. Uh, this one, you bring data in, you add something to the visualization uh, level of detail. With the exclude, you take something out. So it's almost the same, but just works in reverse order. Okay, I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share the video with anyone you think you might enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next video.